welcome to my channel. It's Joe Jaguar again. Uh, today let's talk about solar filters. <clears throat> well, more in the, the hydrogen alpha, also called HA. I don't know why HA stands for hydrogen alpha. Okay, as you can probably tell by my voice, I got re-sick again. Now, um, I know the last couple weeks I was uh, had a cold uh, type of thing, and I mentioned that in a couple of videos. Um, However, I hosted uh, New Year's Eve at my house and all my family came over, uh, except for the three, uh, three sickest people, which was my mother, my older brother, and my nephew. Um, however, everybody else came and there was a couple kids that were uh, a little bit sick and as well as my sister-in-law. So I don't know if I re-caught it from that. But you know, that's okay because we had a lot of fun. Uh, we always have fun with my family uh, type of thing when we get together for parties and stuff like that. So, uh, whatever, I got a, a, I got a recold again, it's not the end of the world. Uh, hopefully I'll get over it within the next few days, and um, anyway, so that's why my voice probably sounds like that. Uh, today's video, I wanted to talk about, again, solar filtering, uh, solar viewing type of thing. Now, just so you know, um, I go, so I'll, I'll tell you how I got started in it. Um, so back in the 90s, uh, if you wanted to look at the sun, it was basically only one way, which is the like glass filter uh, or a what's called a white solar filter, and basically it just lets you see the sun. Uh, I got a couple of photographs here. Hopefully you guys can see that. So I, I took a couple pictures. So there's the sun there, and you can see a couple of sunspots uh, a little bit. Uh, let me see if I can. This one was um, solar eclipse. Well, partial solar eclipse, so I captured that. Um, here's another one. You could see a couple, uh, I think you can, uh, a couple sunspots. Um, where are they? Over up here, closer. Uh, just barely on the edge, and then there's a close-up view. That one you could tell. Um, a couple sunspots at the top, at the bottom. Uh, anyway, so that's how you would see the sun in a white uh, solar light viewing. It's not expensive, uh, $30 to $40 um, to, to view the, the sun safely. Uh, you can get Eclipse glasses, kind of looks like those 3D glasses type of thing, but that's safe as well. And they're probably five bucks each for those. So that's a good way too. Um, so when I got started, basically it's the, this is the only way to view the sun. Now there was another way where you can see like the fire or the flare shooting out of the sun. That's called hydrogen alpha, HA viewing. But it was very, very expensive. So in the 90s, being it's that expensive, so I'll, I'll show you what I mean. This is a 60 millimeter refractor, solar uh, scope. Um, something like that back then was like 5,000 Canadian back then. It was a lot of money. Uh, not only that, that most of the companies like uh, Daystar, a Thousand Oaks and stuff like that, they needed to have a power source. So you needed to plug it into some power um, and, and get them to fine-tune it type of thing to see the flares properly. So it wasn't until Cornaro, this company here, uh, came out with, it's, it looks like a brass version telescope uh, type of thing uh, called the Cornaro Telescope, and uh, where it became, started becoming popular, it started becoming slightly cheaper, um, and you didn't need any power source, electricity, uh, power tank to, to warm up the lens or the filters to get the, you know, so you can see the fire shooting out of the sun or the flares, you know, that type of thing. Um, so I never got into solar observing except for the white light in the 90s. And I think I bought my first HA solar uh, telescope was probably 2003, maybe 2004. It was the 40 millimeter solar max, uh, came with a BF5, which is a blocking filter. And I can't quite remember what I paid for it back then, uh, but I, I bought it pre-owned off someone. Um, and the reason why I picked that one, there's another model called the PST, it's uh, short for Personal Solar Telescope. It's a 40 millimeter, so just picture this is a 60 millimeter telescope. Uh, 40 millimeter would just be half. Now remember, the sun and the moon are, are very close, so you don't need big, huge telescopes to, to view those things. Um, but anyway, the PST, um, 
if you're looking at an entry level solar telescope, that could be the one for you. It's uh, Canadian, it's about seven, I think it's six ninety nine, seven hundred dollars with tax, might go up to eight hundred dollars. Um, it's it's not cheap per se, but to view the sun in the H alpha uh, H A format, it, it's not cheap. It, it, it is expensive to make. So uh, if you're looking at an entry one, that might be it. But uh, being that that scope is uh, the PST, okay, is rated at about one A. That's kind of where you start to see surface details. Do you start to see the flares? Um, and, you know, so uh, that's where the PST is rated at. And I wanted something a little bit better. So the same company made the, the same size, forty millimeters but it's rated at 0.70A, which is a little bit better. You see a little bit more detail, a little bit more flares type of thing. So I, bought, I went and bought that version. I liked it so much that then I bought a used SolarMax uh, 60, which is identical to this guy um, in size, uh, and it had a BF10. Um, back then, the, uh, let me show you what the front looks like. So this one is a different, it, it, this is the SolarMax 2. So Solar Max that I had back then, 2003 or 4, was a little bit different. This one, the filter is in the middle, and you can put a, a double stacking filter in front if you like to make it go even uh, lower uh, filter wise. But uh, anyway, I paid the 3000 Canadian for a used one back then, this size. Um, and then that's it. So, what I'm showing you today is a, the next version up, which would be Coronado Solar Max 2. Uh, they just came out with a 3 version. Uh, not that anything's wrong with this guy. Uh, it's just, you know, with anything in life, they make a first edition, second, third, and so on um, type of thing. Now, if you're thinking of getting into solar viewing uh, in the HA format, and uh, this scope would be considered an intermediate one. This is not a beginner's level, so just to give you an idea, a brand new Solar Max uh, 2 would be about just shy of 2,000 bucks. With tax, you're looking at about 2,200 bucks. Um, and if you want to take it from a uh, 0.7A down to uh, 0.5A, um, it's probably going to cost you at least another thousand more. Now, what that is is a second filter that pops on here um, and it changes it from that to that. Now what's the difference? The difference is on the actual surface of the sun, you will, it will show you more like the sun is boiling type of thing. So if you want to see more surface detail, uh, it's good to take it, you know, be double stacked or get to this type. Uh, but if you want to see more flares type of thing, I find that the 0 0.70 or a single stack version is good enough. Uh, again, it costs about a, at least a thousand dollars more to put a second filter on that. Um, so that that's it. Now I upgraded uh, this guy with a moonlight um, focuser. So this is basically a top end focuser, um, probably about four to five hundred dollars just for that focuser. Um, so this is my setup here. Um, and let me just show you what BF means. BF5, BF10, 15 type of thing. Um, if you are going to buy one, don't get one. Uh, Coronado sells a BF5. That means, as you saw, that lens in there, it looks like purple, is uh, minus 10 millimeters wide. Um, and they do have a version that's uh, 5 millimeter. Another company has a version that's 6 millimeter. Um, basically, don't get that kind. It, I, you should get the BF10, but the Lunt has the you know, blocking filter, it's called a 1200 or a 12 millimeter. Get that one because the, the lens is so small that it's almost like looking through a peephole. Um, it's just hard, harder to find stuff, and especially if you're going to get into imaging, astrophotography, it's just going to be very tight. So don't even bother with a BF5 or a BF6 blocking filter unless your budget really, really can't handle it. You could upgrade that later, sure. But of course, you're going to lose a little money selling like a BF5 to a BF10. So take that into consideration. Um, now I did show uh, my sister, um, you know, we, we all went on a vacation about 14, 15 months ago. Um, we 
rented a cottage. We, you know, I took this guy up north, and I showed my sister uh, basically it because she, I guess she found it like when I told her this guy can let you sh see the flares. Um, I don't think she was too impressed, and the, the reason why I think is what you have to remember is new people don't understand distances and size. Just like I know you guys are in the hobby, you know the first time you show somebody a galaxy or a nebula, uh, they're, they're dim little uh, smudges of light in the eyepieces. And most new people, they look and they say, oh, that's a galaxy, that little round fuzzy thing. Uh, they don't understand that that could be 20 million, 50 million light years away, or, or even like the Orion Nebula, they look at that and it's like, okay, I see a little cloud. They don't understand the distances, they were lucky to see it. So, I think I made a, a couple mistakes when showing my sister is that um, the mount that I brought up was non-tracking. So, even in the Coronado and the Lunt series, when you're looking, let's say, that's your IP. So, I, first of all, my first view wasn't so big because I don't want the image to be moving so fast. So, I didn't make it very big and uh, type of thing uh, because, it, again, my mount wasn't tracking um, or I didn't bring the drive to make it track type of thing. So, when she saw it and she saw like a little tiny flare, she didn't understand the size. Now, if I were to blow that up, uh, let's just say, um, later on, I blew the image to maybe the sun was this big and that flare was maybe like that. Now, maybe if I were to explain to her, hey, Grace, um, okay, I mean, because most people, when they look at the sun, it, it's bright. It, sh it looks big. It shines half the earth at one time, the other half in, in the night uh, type of thing. They probably think, you know, it's 10,000 kilometers away or, or, you know, something, you know, close. They don't understand even the sun, and it's, you know, you can feel the warmth, you can feel, you can feel the sunshine on you, you can, you know, you can see it, it looks close, it is not close. So, you know, in reality, if I were to maybe give her a little um, pep talk first and explain to her, when we look at the sun and you see this flare, in comparison, the earth could be like that. Now, let me see if I can zoom in on that and you guys see that. I'm going to zoom it in. So that's about it. So do you see the earth right um, underneath that line? So I'm just trying to say that that line, if it was a flare, that little circle um, is pro could be the size of the earth. Now, depending on the flare, of course. So, you know, maybe if I explained that to her, she would have like had a better understanding that little tiny flare that she saw on the first image where I had, you know, less power really a big flare. Um, so yeah, she didn't seem too impressed, but you know, I didn't want to bore her to death and give her a speech. So, but maybe, you know, uh, us guys that show people that, I guess maybe the best thing is, uh, maybe we do have to uh, talk to people, give them a little essay or a prep talk, just so they kind of get an idea of um, what they're about to see and the distances and size. Now, let me show you, I don't have a, a photograph what you would see through a Coronado uh, or an HA scope. Now, let me turn it around and uh, my computer just shut down. So let me, give me one second. Okay, so I have an image. I'm gonna show you guys. And here we go. So I'm just gonna turn it to my computer. So this is roughly what you guys would see with this this guy here. Let me see if I can get closer. So that's roughly what you guys would see uh, in a HA, a solar filter, or a hydro hydrogen alpha. You could just see a little flare right there. Now, this is a good, and you could see it's kind of molted there. Kind of When you're looking through the eyepiece, sometimes it looks like it's kind of boiling, like a soup type of thing. Now, I think that's a good representation of what you're going to see. And the reason is, um, you know, in, on the internet, you probably will see images 10 times better than that. Um, it's more clear. It's really red flares that are shooting out that are crystal clear. But remember, that's a camera or 
a CCD imager, that type of thing, where cameras are much more sensitive and are taking longer exposures than our eye can. So just take that into consideration. I think that's a great example of what you're going to see visually with your eye. Yes, there are better images than that on the internet, but just remember, it's, it's like taking a picture of uh, a galaxy. The camera's going to show all the light uh, details that your eye won't see anyway. So anyway, that's what you, you will uh, see. If you're interested in uh, solar observing, I would say the first step is to get the white light solar filter. Uh, 30, 40 bucks, and then if you if your budget's you know between five to eight hundred dollars, maybe the PST. Uh, that's about eight hundred new. You could probably find them once in a while used. I don't see too many. Um, if that's your budget, then that might be your best bet. Um, if you have like a two thousand dollar budget, uh, again the sixty millimeter uh, is about two thousand Canadian before tax, uh, so it's not too cheap. Um, and this brings you up to the, um, the intermediate range. And then, of course, Coronado and other companies sell 80 millimeters, 90 millimeters, 100 millimeters, and more. Um, so, of course, that becomes very expensive. Uh, so, for most people, maybe up to the 60 millimeter is more than fine. Um, maybe even, even that price, maybe your spouse would kill you if they spent you know, over $2,000 on a little 60 millimeter uh, solar scope. But that's okay. So that's what it, that's what this is. I uh, hope you guys like this uh, video. Uh, what you can see, what you you know through a guy like this, um, and I'll see you guys on my next video. This video is on my new camera. I got the uh, sound on the low because it's maybe like six feet away. So tell me, guys, how does it sound? How does it look better than the original camera I have? And please subscribe, comment. Um, I will see you.